Powell Nation. Paul got it here with Powell.com. Right now you are watching some northern traditional dancing from the 2008 Gathering of Nations Powell in Albuquerque, New Mexico. We're going to start the show in just a minute. I have an interview with Shane Bullock, who is a historical um, historian and cultural preservationist with her tribe. Learn more about what she's doing to preserve her tribe's stories and history. While we're watching, though, let me know why you're, while we're waiting. Let me know where you're watching from, what tribe you're from, and where you live. Everybody, I'm Paul Gatter with powwows.com. Thank you all out there in Powwow Nation for watching again this week. I'm so honored to have you here. I see lots of people watching from, let's see, Virginia, Connecticut. Hey, Thomas. Uh, Saskatchewan's watching. California. Hello, hello, everybody. Thank you. Tonight, I have an interview with Sh uh, Shanae Bullock. She is a historical preservationist, and she works with her tribe in a couple of different ways and learning to tell or helping to tell her tribe's stories and preserve their history through some ecotourism, and even helping out with some some of their tribe's businesses. Um, so learn about her in just a minute, but I do have some announcements before we get to that. So yeah, keep posting. Let me watch. Let me know where you're watching from. I see some, let's see, Texas is watching now. Hello from the Netherlands. That is awesome. Love hearing that. Thank you all for being here. Quebec is here. LA, New York. Tonight's guest is from um, Long Island, New York. Awesome, awesome. Thank you, everybody, for being here. Uh, it's almost the weekend. It's almost we're almost back to powwow. Lots of lots of powwows are happening. So if you're going to a powwow this weekend, let me know. Um, if you are looking for a powwow, be sure to check out our powwow calendar at www.powwows.com/calendar. Um, and here I will uh, right here we have lots of powwows being added. Oh, sorry. Add, um. We have powwows being added almost every day. There are lots of them starting to happen all over the country as things open up from this pandemic. So go check that out. I'm sure you can find one somewhere near you coming up soon. So be sure to check that out, www.powwows.com slash calendar. All right, a couple of announcements. First and foremost, tomorrow, Friday and Saturday and Sunday, we will be streaming um, the Manitowabi Virtual Powwow. Their powwow is usually held in Winnipeg, um, Manitoba, up in Canada, and I hate that we're missing that again this year, but they have an amazing virtual event planned. We will start live at 1 o'clock tomorrow, Eastern, so be sure to check that out, and we'll be streaming Friday and Saturday live on powwows.com, and then they're going to have some dance specials over on a Facebook group, but we will be sharing those over to powwows.com, so you can check them out too. 
Um, I've seen some of the videos already. They got some amazing dancers that are competing in this virtual powwow and some really cool specials. You don't want to miss that. So come back over to powwows.com's Facebook tomorrow to check that out with the Manitowabi powwow. Two, um, I am super excited to announce that 2021 um, is the 25th anniversary of powwows.com. It's, it's hard to say that without feeling old, but thank you all for all your support over these 25 years. And coming up soon, we're going to have a big celebration. We're going to do some really cool stuff for the next couple of months, or a few months actually. Um, and we're going to kick all that off July 1st with a big, big contest and giveaway. Um, might be a hint that this, some things may have come in today that you might might want to keep checking out. Um some things that we're going to be doing for our 25th anniversary. Um, so if you'll head over to www.powwows.com slash 25, you can sign up there to get updates and notifications as we do more things. Um, not only do we have a contest coming up, but we've got some cool um, videos we're going to produce, some some live shows. We're going to bring back some people that helped powwows.com over the years. Um, we're going to tell some stories about uh, some, some things that have happened over the years and some history of the site, uh, some of the places we've been and... Uh, We've got some other stuff planned too. Some new features for powwows.com coming this summer. Some partnerships we're working on. It's going to be over the next few months, we're going to be announcing some really cool things to really celebrate these 25 years. And it's all thanks to you. Thank you all out there. The Powwow Nation community makes this possible. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, it has been an amazing 25 years. Um, and, and I'll talk more at some point uh, over the next, next few months about kind of how powwows.com got started. Um, it was not something I set out to build. It was not something that I thought would ever turn into anything, but it was because of you, the community out there that kind of drove this and um, uh, made me start looking at this in a different way. It was not something I just was teaching myself how to play with websites in grad school. Back in 1996, it instantly became a community and it was all because of you all. So thank you, thank you. And we are going to be looking at some really cool things to do in the next few months. Jennifer, yeah, yeah, I was 10. Um, I am older than I look, uh, but thank you. Thank you for the compliment. Um, I celebrate, you know, celebrating 25 years of powwows.com and in a few months I'll be celebrating my 50th birthday. So, um, yeah, yeah, definitely feel old, but very, very fortunate and blessed. So thank you all for that. Uh, so be sure to go over to www.powwows.com slash 25 and sign up for those notifications. Also, don't forget, we still have, um, our fill it forward program that we're doing. It's these little tags right here, not the end of a disc golf, sorry. Um, really gotten into disc golf these last few months, but this little tag right here, go over to www.powers.com slash water and find out. Um, get yourself one of these tags, and as you fill up your refillable water bottle, take a sip there. Um, every time you do that, the Fill It Forward campaign donates money to clean water initiatives around the world. They are working with two projects in Canada, one in, in uh, the United States, that are really helping our indigenous people get clean water and access to water. So it's an easy way to help them out, and it really makes a big difference. And if we all get behind this program, we can make a huge difference. So please check that out. Um, all right. Denise says, yes, we. Um, I actually created a Facebook event for the kickoff, um, and there will be more posts coming. If you go and sign up at the www.powers.com slash 25, that's the first place you can go to get notified. Um, I'm still building out kind of all the plan that we're going to do and the things that are going to be happening. Um, but yes, we'll, we'll post more something up coming up. So just check that out. David, not a powwow tonight, but tomorrow there will be a live or a, pow, a virtual powwow live on powwows.com's Facebook page tomorrow, one o'clock Eastern. So come back for that. This is just our weekly show that I do every Thursday night on Facebook and YouTube. It's just my way to connect with you all, the community out there. Um, and tell some stories uh, and let tonight, like I'll be highlighting Shanae Bullock and telling her story. So check that, you know, I think you'll enjoy that, but no, not a powwow tonight, unfortunately. Um, wish I was at a powwow. All right. So Manitowoc tomorrow, check out our 25th anniversary, um, information, go join the fill it forward campaign. Also special thanks to our Patreons. Those are the people that are, that is the powwows.com booster club and they make a monthly contribution and we really appreciate their support. Thank you all for that. Uh, they are making a big difference and really helping powwows.com move forward. You can join them over at www.powwownation.com. Okay, so enough said. 
So let me tell you, uh, um, Cheyenne Bullock, and she'll tell you more about her in just a moment in the interview. Um, but she is a member of the Shinnecock tribe up in Long Island, New York. And she has been working to do some uh, amazing things that, where she's preserving the history and doing that through ecotourism and really helping tell the story, connect people with the story of her tribe and the land up there. So I'm excited to tell her story. Um, I posted links. It's in the first comment. It's in the pinned comment below. So go uh, click on the links after the show and explore more about that. But here is my interview with Shanette. I'm so excited to have Sinead Bullock here with me this week. She is so involved with her tribe and her culture, um, with the Shinnecock tribe up in New York. She lives now in Atlanta. Um, and she is an entrepreneur, a consultant, um, and a, a, tour, a tourist operator, which I'm really excited to talk to her about. So thank you so much for being here tonight. Thank you. This is awesome. Um, I love powwows.com um, and just really excited to be here and get into this amazing conversation as the spring is sprung and the summer's taken. Like you said, I'm going to be in the water paddling, doing some amazing outdoor stuff and also, you know, running a business at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, so um, let's start there. Tell me a little bit about your background and, and how you got into, you know, reading your biography and you, you say you're into um, uh, how did you put it, uh, the historical perspective, um, uh, kind of that, that side of history. How did you get into that? What, what's your background? So um, so the name of my business is Moxquitu Consulting. Um, and Moxquitu in our traditional language means medicine. So the real purpose of Moxquitu Consulting really is to um, help people get back to the earth, reconnect to the earth. You know, a lot of us indigenous people haven't really disconnected from the earth, but we need others on ground with us as we're still pre preserving and protecting the earth. And with that comes culture. So through cultural preservation, um, you know, we're able to kind of, you know, really do that. So that's pretty much kind of a little bit about what the purpose of Moxiju Consulting is. So I do a number of different things in that, um, you know, I have a background in history. I come from a long line of historians in my family. Um, I'm very, very proud of that. I was the little girl that um, didn't always run outside and play when they were telling us about the stories. I sat down and actually listened um, and I retained a lot of that information. Um, and so throughout my life, um, I started really moving and getting um, right out of college, um, working in museums um, and our museums in the Northeast. So the Shinnecock Museum, Plymouth Plantation, which is in Plymouth, Massachusetts, um, and uh, hence Plymouth Rock, <laughs> and Mashantuck and Pequot, which is a Smithsonian affiliated museum. Um, so I was there, I'm not gonna say how long because of <laughs> how old I am, um, but I was there for a substantial amount of time um, and you know, really being mentored by a lot of elders um, who were either in my family or some of our sister tribes. And I really just understood that it's really, um, it, it's a responsibility to retain that knowledge and preservation. So I found that in the museum field, there was a lot of business to business happening with non-indigenous consulting firms. Uh, and here I am as an employee, right? Working at some of these institutions and in many ways it felt like a slap in the face. And I realized, well, I don't have to have a PhD to own a business, you know, and sometimes in some of those museum fields, you know, you have your anthropologists, your archeologists, your museologists, your curators, and they right. have all these amazing letters behind their name. <laughs> um, and it, it's substantial amount of time in, uh, in the academic. Um, and I learned a lot from them, but I really wanted to do for my people immediately um, and also provide services and education and even jobs soon uh, for some of our people. So that's what um, kind of landed me focusing on getting Moxquitu Consulting, um, you know, up and running back in 2019. Awesome. And so uh, you, you do a, um, a cultural tour up there, which I love the idea. And, you know, I'm very fortunate. I've gotten to travel to lots of powwows all over the country. Um, and I love it when I get to go and visit, visit a powwow where they bring in some of the, the local tribes history. Um, so I love that you're doing that up in New York. You tell, me, tell us a little bit about what your, you know, what your canoe tour entails. 
So it's, it's an extension of what I call like living exhibits. Um, that is like one of the services that I have provided with Moxkichu Consulting. I do anything from, you know, cultural paddle tours to uh, and canoe tours to even pop-up living villages, right? So building traditional Natavawangs or places of shade um, and creating like an outdoor kitchen. So when you walk in there, you don't see anything as far as contact, maybe copper or a cast iron pot and everything is pre-contact from the food that we're gonna to use to everything. Um, so there was really, um, I was actually contacted by the Southampton Museum um, who had noticed all these different things. And they had told me that they have um, a point in which that they own the conscious point, which is the first point of contact to my ancestors, the Shinnecock people and the settlers. Um, and it's, it's actually a nice little paddle. It's not too rough. It's a little tidal water, but it's a small little teeny like little inlet, um, about an hour paddle. And the paddle is amazing because one, it's a summertime. Who doesn't want to paddle in the Hamptons, you know, family day or do something with the family. Um, but also I look at it as I'm sharing my history, telling my story not going on a tour from a non-Indigenous person telling my history, it's me telling our history. But the most important thing I think is I'm helping others have a personal experience with the land like we do. Caring about our eelgrass, caring about the fish, caring about you know, the health of the water and the coastal um, habitat there um, and listening to it from an Indigenous perspective really, really gets their minds opened up to, you know, what their responsibilities are to this earth. So that's the part that I really like to take away from it. I'm actually going to be doing one once a month for the whole summer. Wow. Yeah, that's, that's actually, you guys actually just got that announcement. No one has that yet. But, um, the, you know, we're doing one on June 19th, but there will be one in July, August, and September as well. Um, and then we're also going to do some plant identification hikes too. Very cool. So what's been the reaction to, to some of the guests that have been on that? And what, what are people are saying to you? Well, I mean, you know, let's take it back to the fact that it's the Hamptons. So the Hamptons, to those that do not know, is where the one percenters go to vacation. Um, and it's, and we are still there. We were not removed from our homelands. We're still there. Um, so with that being said, um, it's, it's, you have, they are just in shock. They are just in awe for one to hear how we are so eloquently, you know, speaking about the environment Two, There's a lot of things that they just didn't even know, or just, you know, and then, and then they want to begin to extend and help and support, invest, support, vote, stand in solidarity for you know, all of the things that we're dealing with from the desecration of our ancestors that is consistently still going on with the overdevelopment happening to anytime we're starting our own economical development businesses as a nation, um, you know, they want to be able to help, whether that is supporting, um, making connections and things like that. So they began to really see us as humans and not just as a past tense or, oh, that's the reservation over there. That's where the Indians live. They actually really get to have a real personal um, Because of COVID, um, we don't have any more than 30 people on the tour. And we do kind of advise people to bring their own um, water vessels. But we this year have a, um, we have an outrigger. So I think they'll have some paddle boards, kayaks, canoes that people can rent. So cool. Yeah, you know, as I talk to more people and, and you know, hear people telling their, their individual tribe story or their story, um, those are the things that, that I love hearing that, you know, as you make those connections with people, as people hear um, things for your tribe story, that they are able to actually make a connection with it, you know, dots start getting connected. And um, then, you know, these, these things they're hearing about in the news, whether it's um, clean water rights or so, tribal sovereignty or you know supreme court cases about land in oklahoma 
all of a sudden they're like, oh, wait a minute, I get that. There's there's actual people behind this. You know, it, yeah, um, it, it does really help fill in some lines for people. It, it, we get the same kind of comments on pilots.com and, and you see that people start making those connections. Pretty awesome. So that's great yeah. that you're able to do that. That's really so cool. Thank and in you. such a unique way. I, I love, um, we're going to have to... Um, see if we can plan a family trip and come up there and take one of those that that would be yeah so or we can always just plan it whenever you know let yeah. me know when you're coming like i said we i i can i have um access to other water vessels too so depending on that would be awesome and anybody else that's listening uh you know that's interested definitely go to my website and uh you know send an email subscribe yeah. i'll make sure i'll put um in, in the comments of the, the video tonight. Um, we'll put all that in some links to your Instagram and to your website so people can go out there and check that out. Um, and where, before we get off the tours, where does this launch from? You know, if people are looking for this, where where do they go to get this? Um, so, so the location is very, very, very historical. Um, not only to us as Shinnecock or Southampton or even New York for that matter, but the United States. You know, you have Plymouth, right? Most people know Plymouth. Most people know Jamestown. And most people really don't know Conscious Point. Now, Conscious Point was the first point of contact um, in New York as far as contact with indigenous peoples in the state of New York, in the entire state. So it's a very, very historic uh, place and significant place, well-preserved. Um, there are some houses that kind of live around there. Um, and again, for those, because a lot of people just like, oh, oh, it's, it's the water. Yes, it's tidal water. And when I say tidal water, it has salt in it. <laughs> um, but it's not that rough because uh, it's not quite open in the open body of water. It's a nice little inlet. On a nice day of low tide, um, there are days where we can actually get out um, and, and you could stand up you know, right there and hold on to your canoe and stand up. I've done that a couple of times where we just kind of beach, I get out and I just, I talk from one of the little islands that's right there. Then we get back in and paddle to shore. So that the paddle is about an hour. Now for the, for people to be able to like register, I think right now we've actually sold out, believe it or not. We've sold out before June, um, which is a great thing. Um, you know, obviously pay attention to see if it opens back up. Might people might not come or might cancel last minute. Um, again, they could just go to the website. It's on the website there. Awesome. And where in New York is this? So Conscious Point, New York is in South. Well, technically it's in Long Island, New York. Okay. So Southampton. So it's the like towards the east end of Long Island. So if you were to look at a map and you just type in conscious point in Y, it'll come up. And it's literally like just this little body of water. Um, that's there. Where's my phone's ringing? Um, you know, and we talked a minute um, before we actually hit the record button. And, and I'm always interested to hear these kind of stories too about um, how our tribes and, and our people are getting into all kinds of businesses, you know, I think the stereotypical thing now is everybody everybody gets a casino, right? And everybody just assumes that, you know, oh, your tribe has a casino. But we're, it's it's amazing to me to see tribes venture off. And I know you're involved in some of that. So can you tell us about some of the things you're involved with and in, in so the entrepreneurship and the, and the business side of your tribe? Yes, um, it's something that's just, you know, creator is amazing. You know, I just want to just first and foremost, just say that, you know, and I just really thank um you know, my teachers and my relatives for just, you know, just staying with me and sticking with me throughout my life, right? I'm not that old, but I'm not that young. So there's areas that I could have went, right? So I walk a red road and, and, but I've been consistent on it on the outside of Indian country so that I could kind of create the balance, right? So now that I've been able to do that, I'm able to come back with all of these gifts for, from a business standpoint, understanding how to manage million dollar businesses, multi-million dollar businesses and manage them, not just work for them, but manage them. Um, so my tribe um, has been really over the last, I would say eight years, really kicking it into full throttle, especially around the last four years, um, like really, really fast tracking 
um, significant different kinds of businesses uh, for business development. Um, we are a nation that really, like most nations, require economic sustainability for our roads, our educational systems, our elders programs, our environment, um, all these different types of things. So one of the businesses that um, our tribe has really been focusing on is the medicinal cannabis business. Um, and back in 2015, our tribe passed a medicinal uh, medical marijuana ordinance and the tribe voted yes on it. So with that being said, we have been able to get a business going and that business is called Little Beach Harvest. And I am the managing director for Little Beach Harvest. Um, it's, you know, it's still in construction, pre-construction phase. Hopefully within the next couple of weeks, we will be moving to, um, you know, break ground on it. Um, so we will have a fully, uh, full vertical uh, integrated um, dispensary um, and attached to that a wellness lounge, as well as um, a cultivation facility on our traditional territory. Um, and the reason why I stress everything I said prior to kind of just getting right to the point with the cannabis thing is in the state of New York, our tribe, we're kind of left out a lot um, because we're in Long Island. You know, you have a lot of other tribes that are a little closer to Albany. Um, so they're a little bit more relevant as far as our government officials are concerned. We are just kind of off on the ocean somewhere. They do come out there because everybody comes to the Hamptons. You know, all the elected officials come to the Hamptons, but they just drive by our, our territory and never come on, you know. Um, but one thing I always tell people is if Shinnecock means the people of the Stony Shore and something happens to the Shinnecock people because we can't um, maintain ourselves, unfortunately, in this uh, in, in today's society because there are laws against our way of our traditional way of living. So we have to have a job. We have to have specific things um, to, in order to, to, uh, to live in today's society. Um, if something happens to Shinnecock, then what happens to that stony shore? And if something happens to that stony shore, um, then something's gonna happen to the eelgrass and that eelgrass is gonna call, that's not gonna be there. That's gonna cause coastal flooding. And it's going to cause, you know, uh, Long Island to almost be underwater. So we have a big responsibility as people of the Stony Shore, just like other indigenous people throughout the world. So my job is to make sure that, one, we are able to use uh, cannabis for wellness in so many different ways. It's a medicinal plant. It's very sacred to many of us as indigenous people. And here we are entering an industry uh, that has been predominantly white and dominated. Um, and unfortunately, we, um, we know how that goes. We've dealt with, it with the whaling industry as Shinnecock people. We were whalers, you know, um, the beaver trade, the fur trade, the wampum trade. We were left out as far as being industry leaders. This go around, we're not going to be left out because I'm, uh, I'm at the head of that. No. <laughs> For my job, at least. <laughs> That's awesome that, that you're, you get to head that up. And, and you know, it's, it's great to see tribes embracing some emerging markets like that. Uh, and I know other tribes are also embracing the cannabis market. Um, it, you know, it's a huge emerging thing that's coming. Um, I, I, unfortunately, I live in the South and, you know, we're just pretending that that doesn't exist at all. Um, same thing, we're pretending COVID doesn't exist down here too. So, um, <laughs> But, you know, I know that other tribes can take advantage of that. So that's pretty awesome. That's, that's congrats. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see where that's going to go for your tribe. I don't mean lots of, lots of good things. Yes. I, I want to just add one little thing. I, I, I think, um, I think it's, I think it's very, very important, especially in Indian country too, when tribes are announcing their positioning is the next topic in that same industry is intertribal commerce, tribes doing business with each other on multiple levels and then supporting the small businesses within the tribe that's pretty much been my focus right you know from sustainable packaging to landscaping to security to uh, uh cleaning the the facilities all of these different types of things why outsource outside of our community when we can keep the dollars circulating within the community but also the plan itself you know we 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 can't ignore the uh, substance abuse that's happening in our communities, we cannot. 
you know, and, and there's a lot of pain, um, you know, that people are entering what they call gateway um, drugs. And this right here, this medicine is something that we're able to be able to kind of uh, reclaim, if you will, and be able to educate people on and really educate from a younger age so that they don't begin to abuse themselves with it. And it actually causes healing, you know, intergenerationally. So I just wanted to drop that little piece in there. <laughs> yeah, that's really important too. I don't, I don't think people realize, you know, even with the casino industry, I don't think people realize how, yes, the tribe gets a, a lot of money from the gambling, but the other businesses that spring up, whether it's food vendors or food services, um, like security, you know, I, I get to travel some of these casino powwows and some of the security forces, you know, they're, they outsource it to local um, tribal groups that, that have their own security firms. All that kind of stuff really supports um, people in the tribe building up their own small businesses. And it, it, yeah, there, there's a lot that comes of these kind of industries, not just the, the what people kind of see the headlines, whether it's casinos or cannabis or what, everything else. There's right. a lot that really goes into it. Yeah. So I'm glad that, that y'all are already forward thinking and that's pretty, that's pretty great. That's going to mean some, uh, some big potential for your, your uh, community up there, some jobs and some careers. And, and so that's really exciting for y'all. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Well, and again, thank you for spending the time with us tonight. Um, like I said, I'll put all the links to, to all of her information so everybody can go check that out. Um, anything else you want everybody to know about you or some of the efforts you're in before we go? Um, well, I always can be reached out to, um, just like you said, um, with my website. I am always open for exploratory conversations sometimes, dealing with partnerships. Um, I just had an amazing partnership uh, with Teba, myself, and three other amazing Indigenous women that do things outdoors. Um, we had an amazing um, partnership, and we it was called Re Rematriate the Land, an Indigenous Perspective, um, dealing with um, very, very big brands, outdoor brands. You know, we want to make sure that they are not continuously um, profiting off of the genocide of us not being in these outdoor spaces. So it's so important that we are still out there because we are, um, but really begin to have that conversation on a very high level in business also. So I just wanted to say that's what I am doing, but I really just thank you so much. I love powwows.com. I don't know if it was you, but I definitely I think the first time I may have met someone from powwows.com was in, at the Catawba Powwow. I don't know when it was. Maybe it was the last Catawba Powwow. Yeah. And I was like the, I was one of two Eastern Blanket dancers there. Um, yeah. So I've been to a couple of powwows where you all were. Oh, my yeah, yeah. And if it wasn't for you all, my grandmother, who was living at the time in Philadelphia, she wouldn't have seen me dance if it oh, wasn't for you all. So, thank you so I much. appreciate yeah. it. Thank you so much. <laughs> um, that was a, oh, I love that power. They did such a good job with it. I hate, I hated to see them um, not be able to continue that. I mean, hopefully one day they'll bring it back. They had a great venue there at the Winthrop um, Coliseum. Yeah. Um, and it's just a Ew. couple of hours up the road from me. Um, wow. Yeah. So it, it, that, um, I remember going to a couple of those, um, especially that last one. Um, and that was a fun one too, because my whole family got to go up and we, uh, we streamed that one together. Uh, oh, I have a really man. great picture of my daughter. She was probably like eight or 10 at the time. Um, wow. And she's working the camera and, and so, yeah, that was really fun. Yeah. I'm, that's cool. I'm glad you were there. That yeah, was I had to throw that in there. So I love nice. that one. Nice. Awesome. You guys are Thank amazing. you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you again for Sinead for spending some time with us and telling us about that. Uh, one thing that uh, we forgot to mention in that interview, and I want to make sure that uh, I say this, she has an ebook so you can learn more about the 50, uh, the title is 50 Plants, Medicines, Indigenous Oral History and Perspective. So go check that out. I've linked that uh, down below in the comments too. Um, and go check out her website and find out more about her tourism and the dispensary. Got a link to that down there as well. Again, thanks everybody for being here and being a part of Pow Wow Nation. Um, remember a couple things going on, our 25th anniversary. Find out more about that and what these are gonna be over at www.powwows.com slash 25 and you can get signed up and get all your notifications there. Um, be sure to go check out our water project, www.powwows.com slash water. And if you're interested in joining the powwows.com booster club, head over to www.powwownation.com. Again, I'm Paul Gatter with powwows.com. We do this every Thursday night at 9 o'clock on Facebook and YouTube. And don't forget, we will be back 
tomorrow with the virtual Manitowabi Festival. Um, yeah, we're, I'm looking at some videos and things today. It's going to be an awesome weekend. Don't want to miss that. So come back tomorrow, Saturday and Sunday, and see some really great dancing and singing from the folks up there at Manitowabi. So thanks, everybody. I hope you have a wonderful weekend, and I will see you soon. Good night.